Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start in a few minutes.
Good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar on taking care of our mental health in the time of COVID-19 and remote learning. Before we start, okay, we would like to share a few reminders. Okay, so this uh, a webinar will run for an hour and 30 minutes. So we have turned off your audio to minimize noise. So for questions, please type them in the chat box. Or if you're joining us through YouTube, kindly uh, type your questions in the comments section. So meanwhile, to receive a certificate of participation, please fill out the online registration form, which you can access through the links and QR codes you will see on your screens. Ms. Ruth, can we flash please the QR codes and the links to the online registration? All right, so please don't forget to fill out the online registration form that you can access through the links and QR codes. We are streaming live from the College of Public Affairs and Development. I am uh, Evely Serrano, Associate Professor and Head of the CIPAF Knowledge Management Office, and I'll be our moderator this afternoon. So joining us okay, are two phenomenal women who will talk about the importance of taking care of our mental health and the ways by which we can develop resilience in these difficult times. So we would like to recognize our viewers from all over the country, from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I believe we also have uh, viewers from abroad. So we have um, uh, over 200 registered participants okay, in the Zoom me meeting. So I believe uh, the others are um, trying to... Um, join us now, okay, here in this Zoom meeting. And we have many uh, many other participants, okay, via YouTube. So we have posted the link to the YouTube live streaming on the CIPAF Facebook page. So for those who haven't done so yet, please like and follow our Facebook page, UP Los Baños College of Public Affairs and Development. Again, that's UP Los Baños College of Public Affairs and Development. So I would like to acknowledge also my EDUC 111 educational psychology class. Now, this webinar was originally intended only for them, but uh, we realized that we all need help during this uh, very challenging time. So we have decided to make it an online webinar that is open to all with the help, of course, of the CIPAF Knowledge Management Office. So now to officially welcome us to this learning event, we have with us the Dean of the College of Public Affairs and Development, Prof. Rolando T. Bello. Good afternoon, Dean Roland. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ebeli. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all uh, in this uh, webinar on uh, the uh, mental health problems that we have we're facing right now. Uh, as you know, uh, we are faced with a lot of challenges, uh, among them isolation, um, uncertainties, uh, constant change, uh, adapting, readapting. Uh, this has defined our college experience uh, during this pandemic. And uh, I think uh, this has taken a toll on a lot of our uh, mental health, you know? uh, not only uh, all the anxieties related to the uh, COVID-19, but uh, the, the silent, uh, so to speak, uh, problem that we are facing right now is really mental health. Uh, among others, uh, my daily routine is that uh, I get no less than 50 email messages on my uh, UP official account alone, uh, plus other uh, Facebook, Messenger, uh, Viber, and all these uh, sources of information. Uh, this day has taken a toll on, uh, well, it has created a lot of stress and uh, of course uh, taken a toll also on my mental energy, so to speak. 
uh, and I think I'm not alone. Uh, we are all uh, facing uh, various degrees of uh, all these stresses and anxieties that we uh, have uh, during this pandemic. So it's uh, an opportune time uh, to have our uh, phenomenal speakers, uh, as uh, Dr. Ebilia said. And uh, of course, uh, I'd like to thank the, the organizers, uh, Dr. Ebilia, uh, who is the uh, head of the uh, Knowledge Management uh, Office of the uh, College of Public Affairs and Development for spearheading uh, this uh, webinar. And of course, the, your class, uh, Edu, uh, I forgot the 211, I think, so I don't know. One, one, sir. <laughs> one, so, one. Uh, it's really a, a timely uh, webinar. And uh, also, I'd like to thank our resource persons, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Laude uh, and uh, Dr. De Colen. Uh, they are part of the CIPAP Ohana. So they're uh, new to us and that they're really uh, out there to help us uh, along the way. So I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Terry Laude and Dr. Uh, Emily Dicolen for uh, having us, uh, for uh, having with, been with us uh, in, in this endeavor. And um, I think uh, this would be a, a lot of help you know, uh, to uh, address uh, these uh, constant challenges that we face day in, day out. Uh, so with that, Dean, na mute po kayo. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, uh, so thank you, thank you for uh, organizing this seminar, and uh, rest assured that uh, the college will be, uh, you know, supportive of this kind of endeavors. So uh, yeah, sabi ko na. Uh, let's try to uh, get something out of this, uh, and then. Uh, get our uh, resilience, uh, so to speak. So uh, with that, uh, thank you and uh, have a nice day. Uh, so go ahead. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ebony. Thank you very much, Dean Roland. We appreciate a lot your usual support. So thank you very much, Paul, for being with us uh, this afternoon. Now, this webinar is indeed very timely as many of us are struggling with the new normal in teaching and learning. So let's start the ball rolling, therefore, and uh, may I introduce now our first resource speaker. Our first uh, resource speaker is a full-fledged scholar ng bayan para sa bayan. A medical doctor, she serves as assistant professor at the Department of Human and Family Development Studies at the College of Human Ecology, University of the Philippines, Los Baños. She finished BS Biology Cum Laude at the UPLB, pursued and pursued medicine at the University of the Philippines, Manila. She, has a, she also has a master's degree in clinical medicine, okay, in family and community medicine from UP Manila. In 2000, uh, 2018, she was recipient of the UPLB Genetic Society's Paramount Achievement Award for her efforts in breaking the stigma on mental health and advocating for anti-sexual harassments and violence against women and for excellence in the field of family medicine. Recently, she was also recognized as one of the women pillars of the UPLB Gender Center for her significant contributions in gender and development as coordinator of UPLB Gender Center's Reproductive Health Office. Ladies and gentlemen, a well-loved doctor and a phenomenal woman of substance and strength, my dear cousin, Dr. Terry Marie P. Laude. Magandang hapon po, um, Dr. Evi, uh, Dean Bellio, uh, and Dr. Uh, Dicolen. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I am deeply touched and honored to be part of the, your afternoon and I'm privileged to um, share with you a little bit of uh, what I experienced and what I know about our health and well-being as a healthcare provider. Um, can you hear me okay, Dr. Evi Lee? 
Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm having a hard time kasi with my ano, my um headset. Anyway, yeah, so we shall proceed. Um so I'm tasked for this afternoon. We're just two. We're two uh um uh, talks this afternoon on uh mental health and well-being during this time of pandemic. Okay, so uh, let's try to discuss ano ba talaga ang biopsychosocial wellness or what is biopsychosocial wellness and how to take care of our, our mental health and well-being. Okay, I'll just admit. Okay, so there you go. So we'll try this afternoon to discuss. Okay, parang naghang siya. Okay, we will be discussing again before we proceed we shall discuss what is mental health you no know? as uh, as the pandemic has actually impacted us in several ways not just the philippines but also other countries um we have restricted our movements as part of our efforts to reduce the number of infected covid-19 uh, individuals not just in our country but globally more and more of us are actually making huge changes in our day-to-day -day lives and believe me um being part of uh the faculty we've gone through a lot of ordeals already with um th this flexible learning uh right uh, right um right from the very beginning march palang during march and uh, i think most of our students would really admit that you know um they are still adjusting. No, all of us are actually adjusting our daily routines with what's currently happening right now. So new realities are actually working uh, from home, temporary unemployment. We have homeschooling for those um, you know, who have children. And for us, no, for, for our students, our graduate students would be actually this remote learning, adapting to remote learning and the lack of physical contact with other family members. These are some of the changes, not just family members, but also colleagues, no, and friends, which uh, would really take time to get, to get used to, no. So adapting to these lifestyle changes, actually, and managing the fear of contracting the virus and worry about people close to us who are particularly vulnerable are very challenging indeed for all of us. They can be particularly difficult for people even with mental um, health problems or mental health conditions. However, it's very, it's very fortunate for us that during this time, there are several things that we can do, you know? to help us how to become mentally healthy. But before we proceed to that, allow me to share with you what is actually meant by mental health. So mental health has been defined by the World Health Organization, which is not just the mere absence of mental illness, but is actually a state of well-being, a state of wellness in which an individual realizes his or her own potentials or abilities. We can cope with normal stresses of our lives, just as this one, the pandemic, and we can work productively and fruitfully, no? And we are able to make a contribution to our own community. So mental, by mental illness, we mean that the term actually is a collective term to, that, to all diagnosable mental health disorders. But mind you, mental health is not just, you know, the mental capacity. It's affected by a lot of our... Uh, being, no aspects of our being, particularly one, biological, so who we are. So if we feel like we're stressed, how do we feel? We sometimes you would um, some patients or some of our students would complain. We have headache. I have blurring of vision. I feel nauseous. Why is that so? No. So all of this, what we feel, what we think, and what we actually manifest are all related. So that's the biological, the psychological, and the social. If we are withdrawn right now, especially with physical distancing and social distancing or social isolation, what happens to our well-being? We feel the same. No? We feel stressed. No? We feel sad, lonely. So that's just the normal part of, no, that's the normal thing to do, no? not normal thing to feel. No? And the impact of uh, the human ecological perspective, meaning our family, which is the very core social unit that we have, the community that we, that we are revolving right now, Yupilos Banos, 
our school, no, our university, and then the society, Los Baños as a whole, in as it as we interact with the rest of the Philippines and the rest of the world. So all of these, what's happening in the world around us, make an impact on our health and well-being. And therefore, our goal this afternoon is to achieve wellness. Wellness, by wellness, we mean optimal state of health of us individuals or groups of individuals, as students, as professors, as you know, citizens, no? Uh, looking into the eight dimensions. So medyo nag-merge na. We have merged here physical, psychological, social, spiritual, and economic, no? To the fulfillment of one's role expectations in the family, community, and society. So the question here is, does COVID-19 have anything to do with mental health, your mental health and well-being? Okay, the answer is actually yes. No? Share, for example, um, the simplest. So how are you doing right now with your love life? Okay. So how has it affected your relationship with your partner or perhaps with your loved ones? Okay, so you're going to look at, let's try to take a look at the love hormone. What is actually the love hormone? Let's try to take a look at this. Is it A, dopamine? Is it B, adrenaline? Is it C, oxytocin? Or is it D, serotonin? Okay, so if you would notice, it's actually oxytocin. Okay, so why is it? Oxytocin is actually a love hormone that is actually the remedy against loneliness, so fears, partner relationship, and even sexual problems. Okay, so let's try to take a look at oxytocin per se. So when oxytocin, oxytocin has been there ever since when we were born out of our mother's womb. Okay, so during the delivery, even during the delivery, the mere fact that our mom actually has been and delivering the baby, you, okay, oxytocin enters the bloodstream affecting the uterus and even the lactation. So the milk that down factor, that's it. You know? And as we grow older through childhood across our significant milestones in life, as childhood with proper parenting, adolescent, we, we grow to have social interactions already. You know? And then later on, we have bonding with our peers. And later oh, on, we commit to our... Um, special loved ones and even through sexual behaviors no or sexual interactions so that's oxytocin for us okay so oxytocin in other words has that impact on the emotional cognitive and social behavior it contributes based on studies contributes to relaxation trust and psychological stability and allows the body to adapt to highly emotive situations so let's try to take a look at this this slide shows to us Okay, I'll just admit the individual. Okay, so um, let's try to take a, a look at your happy hormones. What are your happy hormones? You have your endorphins. No? When you exercise, that's when you feel like you're really high. No? Not the high type of, you know, uh, uh, like um, the illicit drugs, but, you know, the, that's your endorphins, no? another neurochemical, as well as your oxytocin. So what you feel when you're happy, you feel like you're collected. You can concentrate, no? So that's what your, your energy, happy energy gives you. However, if you are lonely, that's when contraction of your muscles, um, you know, contraction of your muscles and your limbs, you're very sen sensitive to pain and even very irritable, no? That's your adrenaline kicking in. Adrenaline is the, that chemical that's responsible, that's being released through fight or flight. So say, for example, if you are, uh, you, you've been late, no? um, even if we're in remote learning, we're still trying to adjust. Okay? So when you wake up, you suddenly uh, lost touch of time, okay? lost track of time, and then all of a sudden, everything is like your eyes are wide open, you have that sudden rush in your veins, no? and you perspire a lot because that's your fight and flight response. No? That's how you deal with um, situations. Okay? So next would be... Okay, wait lang, wait. So there's a hanging slide. Okay. So how does your body respond to stress all in all? So if you would notice, 
um, it's like when you are in love, no? When you're in love, your eyes dilate whenever you see your, your the, the person that you're attracted to, okay? And then there's sudden uh, rush of blood in your, you know, veins and in your arteries. You feel the thumping of your heart. Your, your lungs expand to accommodate more air, no? And then your muscles would contract. You feel flushed because all your blood is actually in your skin and in your muscles you know, so that it helps you to go, either go there or retreat, to approach her or to retreat, okay? So that's when, uh, that's how stress could be very good for you or very bad as well, okay? So stress and anxiety, what's the difference between the two? Let's try to take a look at it. Actually, stress and anxiety are somewhat close or similar to each other. They're both part of your natural's, natural body's uh, fight and flight response. No? When someone feels under threat, their body releases these stress hormones. The, um, the adrenaline, cortisol. Cortisol is actually that, that, um, that, comes, that uh, chemical that comes out of your brain that uh, actually is released from your adrenals. No? That's on top of your kidneys as what we can see there. So when these stress hormones uh, cause your heart, beat, your, to, your heart to beat faster, more blood is pumping into your limbs, your organs, no? this actually creates a response that allows you, allows us to be ready to either fight or run away. They also allow us to breathe faster as what I've mentioned to you. And at the same time, we, our senses become sharper so that we're able to survive no? or um, retreat from a certain threat. Okay, so in terms of the relationship of stress and anxiety, stress is actually long term, but uh, they would have the same manifestations of symptoms. No, but if it's prolonged, that's when anxiety sets in. If you would notice, is stress and anxiety bad for you? Bad for us? Actually, if you would notice, cramming is one way of stress. No, it's a. Uh, Cramming is one way of dealing with stress. You know? Cramming, um, that's our manifestation. You know? But if you would notice, sometimes it's good because we're so focused in, in what we, you know, we're dealing with such that, you know, um, but after a while, you feel like exasperated already and the learning isn't there, right? So that's the challenge. It becomes useful for, it becomes useful for some people, but it can interfere in day-to-day -day lives, Okay. Much more. So when we talk about anxiety now, so when we talk about anxiety now, it's been uh, defined by persistent excessive worries that don't go away even in the absence of a stressor. You know? It leads to nearly identi uh, identical sets of symptoms as uh, stress such as sleeplessness or insomnia, you know, difficulty in concentrating, fatigue, muscle tension, and irritability. Uh, can I ask our... Um, tech person to uh, admit admit our um, uh, new those in the waiting room. Okay, thank you. So um, the stress actually. So it's normal to feel sad. It's normal to feel stress right now, especially in the time of COVID. It's normal to feel confused at times and scared and even angry. You no, know, during a crisis, that's normal. You no. Know? So uh, that's what we're going to talk about later, how to deal with these kinds of feelings, which we know that are normal, but if, if when prolonged, we know that this can have detrimental effect, effects to our well-being, okay? So let's try to take a look at the next slide. The next slide shows to us the next slide shows to us that mild stress and mild anxiety has the same coping mechanisms. And therefore, if you would notice, if you are stressed, your doctor will tell you, okay, um, might as well sleep. The first thing that you need to do is to sleep. You know, if you're stressed, you know, if you're manifesting headaches, um, you know, uh, problems with um, focus, you know, um, or perhaps limit, you create that sleep hygiene environment, meaning you limit your coffee. You know? um, meditation and even praying, and even listening to relaxing music. There is um, what we refer to as an audio stimulatory, uh, the ASMR. You know? So these are some of the things that can stimulate our um, senses as well. Okay. 
So we need to re remember that stress response is actually a normal reaction to threat, and it becomes a problem when it is actually sustained. Uh, this slide just shows to us the relationship of the impact of COVID-19, which is what? Social isolation, right? So, and what's more important is um, when you have, I've got several, a number of patients who are suffering from social isolation, a little bit of depression because of what's happened to them since they tested positive, no? COVID positive. And this um, oxytocin, oxytocin alone can somehow explain the level of psychological or psychosocial or mental health concern of these um, patients or individuals, such that this has noted when, when oxytocin is low, because remember, oxytocin is actually um, being the love hormone, it's increased when you are being hugged. It's increased when you are in touch with the people that you love. And therefore, if you are having, you know, if you're observing social isolation as what we is what is recommended by our health care providers and our experts, there's a tendency that our oxytocin can be low. So how do we address that? How, how do we recognize oxytocin? The value of oxytocin is actually preventing social isolation-induced behavioral alterations such as anhedonia, no? so the lack of pleasure in life or aggression. It also reduces your social isolation-induced oxidative damage. When you, you, you know, you, you have your antioxidants, right? So oxidative damage is actually the, the, the core uh, problem when you have an illness. No? So these are a lot of inflammatory, this oxidative damage leads to inflammatory responses that actually leads to eventually a disease later on. Okay, so this also oxytocin was shown in some studies to prevent alterations caused by your sympathetic hyperactivation, increasing your heart rate and your heart rate variability no, as well that's actually present, uh, prevented by oxytocin. And hence, some studies recently have shown to us or um, have um, demonstrated that um, oxytocin, there's, uh, oxytocin can actually be uh, administered intranasally, but it's not available on the usual market. No? So it's being tested as is. So what, does the, what do the experts say about oxytocin? No? We're short of an oxytocin, increasing your oxytocin brought about by being close to your loved ones, no? um, is that you need to um, be in close connection, no? in close contact with the ones you love. What's good about our age right now in, in these times is actually we have telecommunication. I hope PLDT wouldn't, you know, interrupt us for this time. But um, uh, we do hope that uh, this telecommunication, the the face-to-face, -face, FaceTime, uh, video, video conferencing actually draws us closer to our, you know, loved ones, friends, so that the human connection stays intact. Okay. So the World Health Organization has actually gave us um, some coping strategies in terms of uh, how to deal with stress. So first, uh, as what you noticed here, it's normal to feel sad as what we've shared with you during a crisis, during crisis. And that increasing connectedness to the people you trust and who can help you actually helps a lot. No? So um, again, how to cope with stress? You have to stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. So you have to maintain a healthy lifestyle while you're at home with proper diet, exercise. It's really oh, that um, redundant, but it's very important to stress that you get uh, adequate sleep, exercise, and harness that social contact and connectedness with the people you love, either through email, um, phone, or perhaps um, writing, long handwriting letters no and uh even if this pandemic gives you so so social isolation and you feel like smoking or taking alcohol perhaps to dampen those emotions please do not do not feel if you feel overwhelmed you have to talk it over with a close friend no um another cause of stress in our environment right now is how to deal with the fake news no? so please make your facts get your facts straight 
Okay, so only credible sources of information. That's when you get your, you know, the things that you need to share among your friends and family. You know? So please limit your worry and agitation by lessening the time you spend in in front of the TV, watching, even um, doing FaceTime, you no, know? or uh, sorry, Facebook, you no, know? social media, Twitter. So sometimes uh, I get confront, uh, I get um, consults from patients who would be having some twitching. So they can't they can't um, isolate it if it's due to COVID or if it's, you know, most of the time it's due to fatigue. Why? Because all day long, they would still be, you know, um, interrupted or distracted by gadgets. So please do give ample time, no, uh, limited time for such uh, use of uh, social networking as well. So a balance, strike a balance. Draw on your skills you have used in the past and have helped you to manage previous life's adversities and use these skills to help you manage your emotions during the challenging time of this outbreak. Uh, just, a, just recently, a friend of mine showed me a, a huge collection of her paintings. She's not a professional painter, but because of the time that she had during the time of COVID, despite her being a doctor, she was able to, you know, draw from his, from her uh, artistry, something to look into. So that makes, made her happy. That made her, um, she's been quarantined because of the exposure that she has as a healthcare provider. You know? um, she'd been tested twice positive, you no, know, exposed po twice to a positive individual. And hence, you know, she had to be rendered complete 14-day quarantine inside her uh, unit. You know? So what she did was actually she took a stand bravely and, you know, did some painting. And that's how she survived that 14-day quarantine inside the confines of her room. Okay. Uh, Dr. Our national scientist, social scientist, Dr. Hani Karandang, has shared um, eight, seven to eight basic psychological needs of the human being. This was specially highlighted during the time of pandemic. And, and allow me to share with you just briefly what this is all about. No? So first is actually personal significance. It's really important for us to know, no, that to know and feel that we matter. You know, especially during this time, there are lots of uh, people, we, you know, they, they need to be recognized, just like, uh, say, for example, the taxpayers, you know, at the start of this um, pandemic, the, the people who actually got the Ayuda, you know, the social amelioration program, are those who are actually uh, indigent you know, or marginalized. But we are the taxpayers. So sometimes it you know, adds an, another stress to these um, middle-income families. No? We've been doing our part. So self-recognition is very important. Okay. Next would be um, love. No? When we talk about uh, love, it's unconditional acceptance, no affirmation. During this time, no, most of us would be staying at home with our family. And if you would notice, that's more than 24 hours a day kasi tuloy -tuloy, no? It's more than 48 hours. And if you would notice, that's when a lot of, you know, you'd be ticking, you know, would you'd be snapping, you know, your, your wits out sometimes, um, you know, just to, just with the emotions, unraveling of emotions. And it's important to, to, to note that, oops, every once in a while, stop, think, these are the people whom I love regardless of who they are or what they have said to me. Perhaps they're also stressed. No? So next would be discipline. Discipline is very important as we set limits, consistency, and clarity. So we have to define. If you have a journal, put it there. No? Uh, there are certain times of the day, so I have to make a routine. No? From 8 o'clock, I wake up 6 o'clock, perhaps uh, do my meditation, my exercise, eat, no? Because uh, at the start of this pandemic, it was really hard for us because like um, uh, we, we had interruption of our usual schedule. That actually puts another stressor to our mental health and well-being. Next would be the sense of competence. We need to know we are good at something. You know? And that's very important. If you would notice, there are a lot of um, uh, students who have organized how to help our drivers, jeepney drivers in the campus who have lost their, you know, uh, livelihood. No? Um, so these actually help them 
more than helping the drivers no or the people whom they're helping because it gives them that sense of competence and comp- compassion that even that I have I have you know I'm very limited with what I have right now I'm still able to give something okay beyond me okay and then affiliation the need for connectedness and that's why um uh you connect with our um close family and friends no self expression is very important so this is the time perhaps that you can look into you know an hour of uh, guitar lessons perhaps trying a new language create some distraction that is very fruitful for you and this is what um this is what dr karandang has really um touched me no this is where transcendence when we talk about transcendence there's the light at the end of the tunnel no um there's something yet that is waiting to unfold something good is going to happen beyond this circumstances that kind of belief that kind of faith actually would help us through no with this pandemic and lastly let's try to stop and smell the flowers smell the flowers look at the beauty look at the positive despite the fact that there are increasing census of um positive people uh contracting covid they're quite um mild compared to the previous ones which we really um you know life threatening so we do hope that it's it stays that way and uh it's very important also a uh, doctor doctor dicolen would just share to us later about uh, resilience but mindfulness uh is that basic human ability to be fully present aware and where we are and what we're doing right now and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us no so it's very important that if you feel like you're stressed so you have that increasing heart rate um you know sweating a bit nauseous a bit dizzy perhaps recognize that i feel this way why am i feeling this way what could have triggered this so and then after that after acknowledging that you feel this way do something about it first you try to meditate deep relaxation techniques helps us a lot no deep breathing exercises you count 1 2 3 4 inhale 1 2 3 4 exhale and then try to close your eyes okay so breathing helps regulate your heart rate and your blood pressure actually goes down if your breathing is actually you know a breathing slowly and relax you create that balance no and then studies have shown that mindfulness actually reduces stress even creates greater awareness of the mind body and soul even the spirit no so anybody can do this you don't need a coach to be mindful it's just being aware of where you are right now how do i feel what am i going to do about it no despite all of what's happening it tells us that i am in control right now no i am in control of what i can do with myself the rest i i can't do anything about it no but what i can control within me i will do something about it okay so how do we re- relieve stress from our relieve yourself from stress so these are holistic approaches to Uh, addressing stress we've mentioned earlier keep a balanced nutrition the more colorful your foods are the better the less naturally colored foods so fruits vegetables every day increase your fluid intake make sure lalo na it's kind of it's kind of hot outside and humid as well so make sure that you're drinking more than 8 glasses of water per day your mindfulness practices deep breathing exercises physical activity that's the problem no we have the baker hall here you can't go in the track and field and you know um go about but what you can do you have youtube download or stream a 15 to 20 minute exercise no a good quality sleep 8 hours no perhaps take a warm bath at night that would help you relax okay supportive relationships such as your friends being connected with your family despite that you are alone here, here perhaps no and mental health care it's not just with a healthcare provider but you know um having a counselor at hand a support group at hand that would mean a lot okay and then lastly what can we do as a community no so uh, dr dr karandang has mentioned that uh, as i have highlighted earlier that um it just takes a simple act of kindness no to you to for us to feel good about ourselves so let's try to take that 
extra mile. No? Think of others and consider your actions and be kind. No? There are instances that really, you know, would really tick us off our nerves, something like that. But, you know, when you think about um, these three phrases, be kind, be kind, be kind. No? So those are her, her own words no, to us. Connect and reach out to your neighbors. It's very important. Um, early this, uh, our, our vulnerable population, especially the elderly, are kind of, you know, discriminated somehow um, from going outside. They, they feel like that because they're isolated totally because, um, you know, policies have been rendered not, uh, especially for them, not to go out of their households. So connect and reach out to them, these vulnerable groups. Make the most of your local online groups. That's a good thing because out of, uh, out of this pandemic, there are a lot of uh, social networks. In our community alone, in our barangay, we have this um, online market. So um, everybody chips in whatever they have there, sometimes do bartering or perhaps you know, sell whatever they can make at home. So that renders community, no? good community participation. Support, vul support vulnerable and isolated people as well. So these are your PWDs, your, your elderly, as I have mentioned earlier, and share accurate information and advice. So if you happen to see you know, um, to read a particular info, you, uh, an, an IEC, an, info, an infographic material, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's if it's well written or it's very attractive, it's really, you know, credible. So we have to take a critical look at it, critique it, and look at the, actually the, the good and credible um, sources of information, such as the DOH website and the World Health Organization website as well. So with that, I hope that you were able to keep calm. We'll stay connected because with this, despite the pandemic, there's transcendence. So we're able to move to, to the next. You know, we're, we're hoping and hopeful and faithful that um, we will see through this pandemic. So God bless and uh, have a, keep safe and healthy, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Laude. Okay, so we already have some questions here, but we'll save the questions for the question and answer after the second uh, presentation. So we will get back to you, uh, Dr. Terry, after, uh, yeah, so after the second presentation when we open the floor for questions. So once again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Terry. So our second resource speaker, okay, is a well-loved educator, counselor, and leader and an inspiring writer who has authored books and articles, notable among which is the book, The Testimony of Love, Struggles, Forgiveness, and Compassion. Prior to joining UP Manila, where she now serves as Associate Professor at the National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professionals, she was an Assistant Professor at the College of Public Affairs and Development. She also served as Professor and Special Lecturer in various universities and educational institutions in South Korea from 2006 to 2016. Before her long and meaningful career in South Korea, she was Dean and Professor at Colegio de San Juan de Letran Graduate School and School of Arts and Sciences. She has received numerous awards, among which the Most Outstanding Filipino in Korea by the Filipino EPS Workers Association in 2008. In 2015, she was Regional Awardee for the Model Overseas Filipino Award by the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration and the Department of Labor and Employment. Dear participants, we are very much privileged to have, with, to have with us today a real life wonder woman and a wonderful friend, Dr. Emily D. Decolen. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Emily, for that very heartwarming introduction. Okay, uh, to all of you, good afternoon. And Dr. Terry, thank you so much for your lecture. I myself learned a lot, no? a lot of my whys were answered like why am i feeling this way no or why is it uh, why am i re reacting like this no so that was really a very good explanation no? from the point of view or uh from an expert no in uh, health professions okay 
So today I'm going to share with you not perhaps more of what uh, medical, not a medical expert, but perhaps more of my experience no? in how I, I and my family survived no, this pandemic. So in our theme or in our title, we focused on uh, mental well-being, right? But in my title, no, I chose to just focus on well-being in general because I think Dr. Terry also mentioned a while ago that when we talk about well, uh, um, mental well-being, no, all the other aspects, no, like physical, emotional, no, social, and all of those aspects of the human being is also already part of the well-being. So I focused on well-being in general. Okay, so for today, uh, in my short lecture, no, around 30 minutes, I hope I'll be able to be, I'll be able to finish it in 30 minutes. Now, these are the things that we would like to accomplish for us to examine the meaning of well-being in the context of your, no, of all the, all the participants, discover ways of promoting well-being among teachers and students, and what else, perhaps uh, some of our participants now are workers, I don't know exactly in our profile, but in your own context, no? and to demonstrate some coping skills to promote holistic well-being. Now, Dr. Terry mentioned earlier no, some of these coping skills no, that we need to uh, have or to capacitate ourselves to be able to survive no, the, the challenges of this pandemic. Now, for, for the students who are listening right now, now why is there a need to talk about well-being, no, well-being in general? There have been a lot of articles and surveys conducted since the beginning of this uh, pandemic, like in our case, let's say from beginning March until now. And uh, the surveys are telling us that there are a lot of issues you know, in terms of uh, experience by the students in terms of their motivation and engagement in flexible learning. No? They also have issues with personal scheduling. No? I know for a fact that a lot of our students, no, young people, are awake the whole night and they sleep during the day. No? So that already destroyed their body clock. And it's really quite challenging, especially now that we are into flexible or online learning. No? They might be online, but their videos are off and we don't know what they're doing. It's either they're dozing off or maybe doing something else. No? So in terms of motivation, scheduling, and also faculty communication, I know that we teachers have a difficulty really trying to communicate with our students in online learning. So it's a challenge for us teachers, and it's challenging as well for our students. No? And therefore, there is now an increase of stress and anxiety among our learners. Of course, not only among our learners, but among us the teachers, employees, no, even parents, no? Okay. And therefore, let's focus a bit on educators or teachers, no? Why is there a need to promote wellness? Uh, since the beginning of this uh, flexible learning or online learning or remote learning, no, there have been a lot of challenges. Number one, multitasking. So if you're a mom or if you're a dad and you stay home, definitely, your kids will be there. No? So you're teaching, you're preparing, preparing your lessons, but you are cooking at the same time and then taking care of your kids. So it's really quite challenging. And I know someone, she's close to me, no, who a few weeks ago uh, really felt no, that this, uh, how do you call this, anxiety. That, that's why she was brought to the hospital because she's taking care of a child at home. No? When she was working before, you know, she leaves the child to the mother-in-law, I think. So it was less lesser stress for her because she, she works outside of, ho of the home. But now it's really quite challenging. No, what else? Demands of work from home, no? Job and financial security. We are lucky that now we still have jobs, but a lot of people really have lost their jobs. So that's causing stress among educators, especially now with the private schools. For us in the SUCs and government schools, I think the security is there. So we really have to be very thankful for that. But for those in the private schools, it's really quite challenging. No? And we are also afraid no, for our own security and for our own health. Now, let's say, let's say, for example, you go to the grocery or you go to the department store. I'm sure there's always that fear that when you come home, no, 
you might be carrying a virus with you which nobody could see. So that's, there's the fear. No? And for example, what if one family member no, are asked to go back to work and we are at home, then every time that family member comes back home, you would feel like worried. No? We don't know whether our family member has contracted the, vir uh, contracted the virus or not. No? So these are the reasons why I think we really need to talk about our wellness no, among teachers, educators, and even now with our students. Now, this survey was conducted recently no, among teachers. Now, one of the respond the participants said, uh, the question was, how do you feel now with this flexible learning? No? The participant said, slightly anxious to be out of my comfort zone. I'm pretty sure a lot of teachers would say, well, my classroom is my stage. No? I'm comfortable teaching here in my classroom, but now we're back to our small corner perhaps in the house. No? So thankful to still be able to work, no? glad to learn new skills or software. I'm sure some of my colleagues listening to me right now no? have really tried their best effort, no? their very best to learn new skills, no? like uh, navigating canvas, no, just like what I'm using now, no, learning Zoom uh, breakout sessions, sharing screens and all that. No? It was quite challenging. No? And to continue, the participants said, glad to still communicate with students, worried for safety and health of students. So we're not worried about, we are not only worried about ourselves, but we are also worried about our students. Okay. And then another one said, frustrated and exhausted. I'm sure some of you feel that right now. Now, in my case, this is the second week of our classes, right? Second week. Going third week. Tama ba? <laughs> Wala na akong sense of time, no? After the first week, I really, really felt so exhausted. I really, really, really felt so tired. So I declared my own day off. I said, it's enough. I need to rest. No? So we are all exhausted, no? Then we did not have the transitional time. I'm sure some of you are saying the same. No, we're not given. We were not given enough time to prepare for flexible learning or for online classes. No, we all, all of us have that reason. No, but nobody knew that COVID-19 was coming. No, so we were not all prepared. No, nor did we have a grace period to test out methods. Our school district wanted us to have it perfect within hours. So I felt unsupported and definitely unappreciated. So there's this feeling of lack of support, no, that you were not appreciated for the effort that you have given. No? So all of this contribute to the stress and to the anxiety that we educators are experiencing right now. So we should talk about caring for the carers. We are not health workers. We are not frontliners, but we are carers. If you're a teacher, you're a carer of your students. If you're a parent, you're a carer of your, of your partner, your husband or your wife, or even your children. So we are all carers. The question is, who will care for the carer? Who will care for you if not yourself, right? So we have to help ourselves. We have to capacitate ourselves. We have to care for ourselves as carers. And therefore, no, I'd like to, I think this was uh, defined already a while ago, but I'd like to share no, this definition of well-being. This was mentioned already by Dr. Terry. So it's the experience of health, happiness, and prosperity. And that includes good mental health, high life satisfaction, a sense of meaning or purpose. I'd like to give emphasis to this, no? A sense of meaning or purpose and the ability to manage stress. That's well-being. Now, I'm, I hope all of us are Filipinos. Are, ah, yes. Uh, I, I saw August, August a while ago. I don't know if you understand this word, no? But may I share with you? In Tagalog, I really love the Tagalog term for well-being because it's so rich. It means kaginhawahan. No? Kaginhawahan. But when somebody asks you, how are you? Maginhawa. It means it's not only mental, it's not only physical, but also emotional. No? And nakakahawa. No? Nakakahawa. Dahil sa awa. 
no let me put a bit of theological meaning into it no kaginhawahan no nakakahawa dahil sa awa no awa of whom no awa of somebody up there no whatever way you want to call that somebody up there no the transcendent being no kaginhawahan kagalingan right we filipinos have this saying um ang sakit ng kalingkingan ay dama ng buong katawan so kung magaling ka if you're kagalingan if you're if you're you know you're uh, what you call this you make well being ka magaling ka in all aspects maaliwalas tahimik komportable sapat in other words we filipinos say hayahay ang buhay a few weeks ago, one of my friends no, sent me a message and then his question was, Ems, how are you? Or, kumusta ka na? No, kumusta ka naman dyan? Three words. I said, masaya, maginhawa, mapayapa. Now, these three words. No, masaya, maginhawa, mapayapa. And that for me is what well-being is. Okay? And therefore, no, what are the major types of well-being? Yung nga, emotional well-being, physical well-being, social well-being, workplace well-being, and societal well-being. And I added one more, spiritual well-being. When I say spiritual well-being, I don't refer to religious, no? Because, you know, spirituality is no beyond religiosity. Okay? And I'm sure you know that, no? So all of this, no, these the types of well-being make no, one healthy person or one healthy being. Okay. Now, let me also give emphasis to workplace well-being. You know, from the beginning of March, no, and most of us stayed home, no, work from home and all. But I think the workplace, meaning your office where you belong, no, was just moved to where you are right now, no, in the confines and, you know, the comforts of your home. But the workplace is still there. So my question is, how have you helped each other promote or keep or support what you call workplace well-being? That is very, very important, no? Because I've heard a lot of people no, telling me that, you know, I, I, I feel so alone. I don't, you know, feel the support of my colleagues in the office and all, no? But I think that is one way of, you know, supporting one another, even though we are not in the confines of our physical offices because we still belong, no? Together in our own organizations, okay? So, yon. These uh, types of well-being are very, very important. Now, may I ask you the question, and this is one way of, I think coping now with this pandemic, and this is what helped me a lot. No, the question: What was the best thing? What's the best thing that ever happened to you during this COVID nineteen pandemic? I always ask this question. Why? Because I believe that one way of coping, no, the stress, anxieties, and all, as what Dr. Terry also mentioned a while ago, is focusing on the positive. What's the best thing that happened? Of course, there are a lot, a lot of negative things that happened. Many people died, etc., etc. But do you see the value of you staying home? Is that not good? Spending time with your family members 24-7. No? Which you have not done before because you were very busy. Because you were working, you were going to school every day. No? So this is one thing that we should appreciate. Uh, during this time of the pandemic like uh, 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 uh what was mentioned also a while ago like maybe during the pandemic you discovered that aha so you're good at playing a musical instrument and that's way of coping also in my case i've learned ukulele no and i really love it see so it's like discovering what inspires during the time of the pandemic discovering the best of what is no? discovering your strengths, discovering your blessings during the pandemic is one way of keeping your well-being. Okay? Now, moving on. In other words, this pandemic or this flexible learning arrangement no, in our schools is an opportunity for us to ask questions that is more of, not less of. 
Meaning, what more can I do? What more can I discover about myself? What else can I learn? No? What do I need to start? Do I need to start dieting? Do I need to start, you know, exercising? What do I want to create? No? Like Dr. Terry mentioned, a friend you know, was able to come up with, you know, uh, how do you call this, paintings or whatever. That's something that you create. No? That something that you want to support, not to prevent. No? What advocacy would you like to start? You know what? Because of my experience during this pandemic, now giving, sharing my experiences like this, this is the advocacy that I want to support. No? And what do I want to reinforce and not to weaken? No? Is it my you know, communication skills or my baking skills? What do I want to grow during this time of the pandemic? Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity really to think about all these things. According to David Cooper Ryder, no, in every piece of art, there is beauty. Right? And you are a piece of art. Can you look at your pictures, your photos no, on your screens right now? You're beautiful. So despite this pandemic, there's something good. We have discovered a lot of our strengths and a lot of our blessings. So, in every piece of art, there is beauty. Despite this pandemic, there's something good happening to us every day. The moment you get up in the morning, wow, there's always something good. Okay, so that's according to David Cooper Ryder. Now, one of the things that I really experienced also during this pandemic something that's helping me a lot no is focusing on appreciative storytelling mm, around mid of march i attended a webinar no and one of the questions wa uh, asked was 20 years from now how will you tell the story of the covid 19 pandemic to your children or to your grandchildren or to your future students and it made me really think so deeply right Yes, what will I tell them? Will I tell them about uh, thousands of people who died? Or will I tell them about a family member who was COVID positive? Or, or will I tell them about how we survived? Uh, will I tell my grandchildren about not uh, being laid off? <laughs> will I tell them about the experience of a family member uh, uh, contracting the virus, but later on she survived, no? Or will I tell my grandchildren or future students about our experiences of doing online games, doing online video kids, during, how do you, I mean, online uh, get-together parties, reunions? No? You ask yourselves the same questions. What kind of stories will you tell your children, your grandchildren, and your future students? And I encourage you to make use of appreciative storytelling. Focus on the best of what is. Focus on the blessings during this pandemic. Tell no, the future generation how we survived six months, going seven months, going eight months. No, Perhaps spending Christmas at home without family reunions, etc. No? Why? Because... A while ago, Dr. Terry mentioned about the light at the end of the tunnel. Telling people about good stories, not fake news. No, appreciative stories gives them no, the ray of light, the ray of hope that indeed, someday, I think di natin alam kung kailan, no, someday this will come to an end. You know, uh, a few months ago, I was invited to give a webinar to Department of Tourism, Region 6. And you know, Region 6, that's where you have the beaches of Iloilo, pa, magagandang ano, tourist areas dyan. And one of the things I asked them was, the same question I asked a while ago, what do you think was the best thing that ever happened to the tourism industry during this time of the pandemic? You know what they said? Nagpahinga ang kalinga, kalikasan. Nature had the chance to rest. No? So that's really something good. No? So there's beauty. No? In every piece of art, there is beauty. Okay. 
this one I also learned from uh, Dr. Hani Karandan's webinar no, last, uh, a few, I think that was last month, no, 8-24-20, okay? I'm just showing off my Canva poster. No? I'm a coffee lover. I love drinking and sipping coffee every day, no? And then at the beginning of the pandemic, early March, that was the time when I enjoyed drinking my coffee in the morning, being mindful of what I was doing, spending time of reflection, prayer, and all. But when work from home started, when we started doing our course packs, I never enjoyed that anymore. So it was really striking for me. No? When Dr. Karandang said, your coffee is there for you, are you there for your coffee? mindfulness no? so perhaps not you know to help ourselves to capacitate ourselves let's find time to be mindful of everything that we're doing our breakfast no sabi pa nga niya, the best place for you no, to really uh, enjoy mindfulness is when you're taking a shower because that's your most private nobody could you know no, nobody could disturb you no just be there at that moment and enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. So your coffee is there for you. Are you there for your coffee? Enjoy everything that you're doing. One at a time. Of course, I know it's easier said than done, especially now with our online classes, no? But let's try. I'm saying this because this works for me. I hope it will work for you too, no? From the time you brew your coffee, you you know, you, you boil your water, no? enjoy that every morning. And you'll have that energy no? that you need for the whole day. And therefore, no, this pandemic is also an opportunity. An opportunity to ask that question, who am I? Remember, spirituality, spiritual well-being is to know your purpose. What is my purpose? Because that gives you the motivation to wake up every day in the morning, to attend your classes, no? even though you're still sleepy and listening to your teacher online. No? Answer that question, who am I? What's my purpose in life? Why is this happening now? There must be a reason why all of us are at home at this very moment. In your career, for example, mm -hmm. why suddenly now you're into online teaching, you hated the technology before, but here you are. Embrace it. Mm -hmm. So make or let every day of this pandemic be an opportunity uh, to ask that question, who am I? Okay. And therefore, dear students, teachers, mm -hmm. this pandemic is an opportunity for us to reframe. Reframe. No? Instead of saying, I can't. Perhaps why do you say, yeah, I can. I can give it a try. And I'm very happy when some of my friends say, yay, I did what I, you know, I discovered it myself. Last night, I was very, very happy because in UP Manila, we're using Canvas. And finally, last night, my students were able to join my classroom canvas. And I was very happy because I myself navigated how to attach, how to put this and all. So it's, you know, just a matter of reframing, reframing, seeing things differently. I know as teachers, we have our own standards. No, we have our own, how do you call this? We have our own ways of doing things. No, now, I'm good at teaching. If I can do this, I can do that. And my students will be able to pass all of them, blah, blah, blah. No? But you know, this pandemic is an opportunity for us to reframe, see things differently. No? Reframing is a technique that consists of identifying and then changing the way situations, experiences, events, ideas, and even emotions are viewed. No? Perspective, different perspective. Now, it is the process by which such situations or thoughts are challenged and changed. Okay? So, let's start reframing. Seeing things from a different angle, from a different perspective. In other words, let's change our mindset. 
if before no your learning outcomes in the classroom was 10 or 10 this time you might want to consider five learning outcomes no change your mindset reflect on your philosophy focus on your strengths change your roles instead of the one you know definitely if you're in uh if you're in on uh, doing your zinc synchronous sessions for three hours after that you'll have a headache i'm telling you and you'll sleep because you get you get so tired no but this time perhaps you could you know try doing giving more activities no? now you're the facilitator of learning not the lecturer okay in other words this is an opportunity for us no to practice what they call empathy no? seeing with the eyes of another listening with the ears of another and filling with the heart of another for example as teachers i'm sure in your class of let's say 20 to 30 students maybe half of your students are going through the same anxiety and you know uncertainty that you're experiencing right now so put yourself in their shoes you understand them no? okay empathy in other words in other words no according to justin rich no and meta no in their article Let's start during this pandemic, and even the uh, UNESCO you know, is telling us that. No? Let's try Marie Kondo in our curriculum. Marie Kondo. Let's try to Marie Kondo our lives. Let's simplify our lives. Don't make our lives complicated right now because it adds to our anxiety. No? There's no, of course, I'm sure we are, you know, we are caught between, no, because I have to finish my syllabus, no, because I have to finish this, because they need this to, to go to the next level. Yes, I understand that. But remember, even DepEd, no, came up with their MELCs, most essential learning competencies. Of so many competencies, they reduce their learning competencies. I think we teachers should also do that. We try our very best. No, that's Maricondo our curriculum, no Maricondo our lives, our lifestyles, and all. Let's go back to the basics. Now, um, uh, Dean Bellio, no, during his uh, opening remarks, and I think Dr. Terry also mentioned about resilience. No, and this is um, something that I would like to share with you about appreciative resilience. Now, appreciative resilience. Or resilience generally means the ability to sustain or persevere in the most complex situations and life experiences. Filipinos are known for being resilient, right? Huh? Imagine we have typhoons A to Z, then back to A to Z. Before the pandemic, no, before COVID-19, we had Taal, no, we had typhoons and all. But we Filipinos remain to be resilient. Huh? We, we, have the ability, we have the ability to bounce back. No, and move forward no? after a certain disaster no? or challenge in our lives. Now, according to David Cooper Ryder, there, uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, there is one silver lining, and that is resilience. No? Resilience can grow. Values can be lived. They can come alive instead of merely espoused. So let's try this to discover how resilient are we no, to be able to survive this period of the pandemic. In other words, appreciative resilience, it says, no, assists people in developing their own understanding and personal call to resilience by using AI principles and practices. Now, I don't know if you are familiar with appreciative inquiry, but I think some of you who are here right now or my students or even my friends or have heard other webinars that I have conducted. No? And this appreciative resilience is drawn no, from the principles of AI or appreciative inquiry. Therefore, no, appreciative resilience is that which sustains us as hope blooms, as despair visits, and as forgiveness opens our hearts. Meaning, no, appreciative resilience makes use of AI principles. And at the middle, you have the three uh, elements of appreciative resilience. And these are despair, forgiveness, and hope. Now, let me go through each uh, despair. It was also mentioned earlier no, that all of us are experiencing anxiety and uncertainty. In other words, 
no one is exempted. All of us, even the strong, strongest people, no, experience despair during this pandemic. No, we experience that dark night of the soul that we cannot see a clear path forward. No outcomes cannot be seen. Doubts arise. No, but no, sabi nga this despair is universal. No one is exempted from experiencing this. But one good thing is, no. And we should remember, despair is normal at this point of the pandemic, but it should not be permanent. I repeat, okay? Despair, anxiety, fear, uncertainty, and all, that's valid. That's a valid feeling. But make sure that it's not permanent. You have to help yourself. Okay. Now, what were our experiences of despair during the pandemic? I'm sure. All of us, all of you have experienced some, exp I mean, some, how do you call this, uh, experiences ra, of despair no, during the pandemic. Now, let me share with you my experience of despair during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, March, maybe first or second week of March, I don't remember dates anymore. No, I and my children were on quarantine because my eldest daughter had an exposure with an office mate who's re uh, who has a relative, a doctor, was COVID positive and eventually he died. So we had to quarantine ourselves. Two days after that, my daughter, no, Kelly, who is in Germany, uh, sent us a message. No, at the time, she just came from Brussels for a study tour and she said she was having this uh, uh, terrible headache. No, I, you know, COVID-19 never entered my mind. So I told her, okay, maybe you're just, you know, a tired, go back to sleep, you take a rest, maybe tomorrow you'll feel better. In the middle of the night, no, she experienced pain, no, uh, sore throat, no, terrible sore throat. And so immediately the next day, no, she brought herself to the clinic for testing. And she, ha she was asked to wait for three to five days. So she went home. She was having high fever already. No? Uh, and she was having body pains. No? So, and she lives alone no, in her apartment. So while waiting for the result, I felt anxious. I felt scared for her and for us also. Because every day we would, you know, parang paranoid ka na every day you check your temperature, no? A little dryness in your throat would make you drink a lot of water and all that. Now, after three days, she got a phone call from the clinic, from the doctor, and the doctor said that she was COVID positive. Literally, I didn't know what to do. I went to the restroom. Uh, what I was, I, I wanted to cry. I wanted to go to Germany. I wanted to see her. I wanted to take care of. I felt so helpless. I really felt so helpless. So when we heard that news, that that same night, I couldn't sleep anymore. I was scared to sleep because I was afraid that maybe she had difficult. She will have that experience of difficulty breathing during the night, and nobody could help her. No. Or maybe her fever will, will go higher and then nobody could assist her. No? I was scared really that something will happen to her during the night. So early in the morning, the first message I send her is, please tell me if you're awake. <laughs> let me know. No, let me just be assured that you are okay. No? But the thing is, it, the feeling is real. No? The feeling of anxiety is there. So what did I do? No, That was the time when i enjoyed my coffee every morning i didn't know that that was mindfulness i just enjoyed early morning while everybody's still awake everybody's so quiet i make my coffee i pray i pray and pray and pray a lot all kinds of prayers and i pray for my feelings because i was so scared what if i had a lot of what ifs and that was despair and the height no, of my despair was when I started thinking that she'll be coming home ashes. So I asked my niece, no, she, uh, she's in Norway, I asked her, Anak, are, are foreign, I mean Filipinos who die abroad because of COVID-19 after cremation, are the ashes brought home to, the, to their families back in the Philippines? And my niece said, yes, of course, Tita. So I felt, you know, I felt bad. I mean, uh, there was a sigh of relief, but still that 
thought, no, keeps coming back. So I had to help myself, no. I had to be uh, practice mindfulness, no. I did sewing, I cleaned the house, I did a lot of uh, quiet moments, not just by my uh, by myself to to pray. No? That's how I experienced despair. No? Everybody in the family really was really affected by this. Okay, so despair. All of us go through that. But again, remember, it's not permanent. The second no, element of appreciative resilience is forgiveness. It is uh, Forgiveness is defined as the animating energy that makes forward movement possible. And it's a choice. Remember, I repeat, repeat, forgiveness is a choice. It's a decision to give up resentment, anger, fear, no? and step toward accepting things as they are. There are a lot of things happening during this pandemic that are beyond our control. And we just have to accept them as that. So be it. We cannot do anything about them. Even if we, if we, uh, how do you call this? We express you no know, our anger, our frustration over the social media. It will not help at all. But we just have to accept them. And this is one thing that I'd like to share with you also. Forgiveness is a gift. It's a gift that you give to yourself. It does not change the past, but it changes the future. Mm -hmm. So perhaps this pandemic is also an opportunity for you to think about forgiveness seriously. No? You might be taking too much, you know, hurts or pains within your heart that it's time to let go. It's a decision. It's a gift that you give to yourself. Now, how did I experience How did I, I'm sorry, how did I experience forgiveness now during the time of the pandemic? And what are the things that should be forgiven? Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Nawala lang ma'am yung in yung presentation, but we can oh, still hear you. <laughs> okay, okay. Nawala yung share screen ko. Yeah, nawala po. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay ma'am. I know in the time. I can see it again. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, in your case, now perhaps you can think about these questions now after the webinar. How did you experience forgiveness during the time of the pandemic? Are there things that you need to forgive? Okay. In my case, now what were the things that I needed to forgive during the time? Number one, I had some resentments with my daughter <laughs> because he, she is stubborn. Her their study tour to to Brussels was cancelled. No, no, when they were there already, they, they, they have already traveled to, to, to Brussels. But the institutions that they were supposed to visit canceled because of the COVID-19. Now, she asked me, Mom, is it okay to go back to Berlin by myself? I will leave my classmates here. And then I told her, no, stay there. You have to wait for them. No, but I have a lot of things to do. I have to do my thesis, blah, blah, blah. So I, did, I cannot do anything. So she traveled by herself going back to Berlin. So I had a lot of what ifs. What if? What if she uh, she did, did, uh, followed my advice? Most probably, no, she was safe from the virus. I was angry, really angry with the organizers of the study tour. They knew right from the very start that COVID there was COVID-19. But with the, why did they have to push through with that? And third is, of so many people, why my daughter? You know, these three questions, it kept, you know, these questions kept coming back to me. And then I said, if I nurture that feeling of anger, resentment, no, there's nothing, you know, it will not do me, do me any good. So finally, I said, aha, I needed to let go. I have to let go of this resentment, of this anger. So when I finally decided no, to let go, wala na akong magagawa, I, cannot, I don't have a control of the situation anymore. It's there. I just have to accept it. No? So moving on to hope. So when I started thinking like, ah, yeah, no, I should not be angry. No, I have to let go of this feeling. That was the time when I experienced hope. Hope no, is believing that the future will open possibilities. It looks at what is and what might be. And so I said, aha, maybe after this, when Kelly no, 
will uh, will survive this COVID-19 pandemic. She will be able to help a lot of people, inspire a lot of people, etc., etc. Huh? And there, that was the experience of hope in my family. In your case, how did you experience hope? No? Okay. Then suddenly, suddenly, I realized, you know, appreciative, no? I realized my blessings. What were my blessings? And what, you know, they gave me courage, no? These blessings gave me courage to, to face what was happening with my family while on quarantine and my daughter who is far away. Number one, her positivity, my daughter's positivity. I never saw her cry. I never heard her complain. So, second source of my hope was my family. Now, my children and, of course, my big, big, big family. Connection, connectedness is very important. Now, my daughter really appreciated it. Now, one time, almost every night, now, they had to do kahoot online games. Now, we did some dinner together online. No, a video ke online, all those things. And my daughter said, Mom, I really appreciate it. I feel, even though you're not physically present, you are with me in this battle. Okay? What else? My source of hope, my friends. A lot of friends who have been there not to pray for us, to support us. And people, I call them angels. No? My daughter lives by herself, but there were a lot of people who helped her. No, some of them she doesn't even know. No, when they heard, uh, when they uh, read her tweet, no, some of the Filipino students in Germany had to bring her uh, groceries, no, right in front of her uh, door apartment, no, and the 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 people there, like the Filipino community, the ambassador, I get to talk to her almost every day because she was also following her up, no, her progress, no, and of course, no, my faith, no, that's one of no big. How do you call this? Uh, or strong source of my hope during this time of the pandemic. So, for us now, for all of you listening now, right now, how will we be able to survive? We need social support. We are physically distant, but we need social support. What made me and my family survive? My family's support. We have a lot of friends who could support us. No? So don't ever, you know feel like uh, intimidated or shy asking someone to help you out because we need each other uh, during this time of flexible learning or even during this time of the pandemic adaptability we need to adopt we need to reframe reframe our minds change our mindsets okay and third is we need leadership in our workplace no environment we need people who should you know uh, lead us to be able to survive this, especially in teaching, no, in our universities, no, the challenges of this flexible learning. Okay? So before I end, I would like to do this with you. No? May I invite everyone uh, to put your right hand on your chest. No? A while ago, Dr. Terry no, taught the breathing exercise. No, we will not do that anymore. But if you want to do this, no? By yourself, you can start with your breathing, inhale, exhale, and uh, you know, do it several times, maybe two to three times. Okay? So everybody, if you could just follow me. No? May I be kind to myself in this moment? May I accept this moment exactly as it is? May I accept myself exactly as I am in this moment? May I give myself all the compassion I need? Okay? So with that, I'm your ends, your, your speaker. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much also, Dr. Dicolen, for that uh, inspiring okay, um, presentation. And so we feel good okay, after hearing uh, your stories. Okay? So uh, at this point, um, we would like to proceed uh, to the question and answer portion okay of this uh, webinar so we may we invite uh, once again um doc terry to join us okay so um i'll be reading now some questions from our um uh, participants and our viewers some were sent uh through the registration uh form 
okay, that they filled out, while others uh, we got from the Zoom chat box. So there are actually a lot of questions. So we would have to, since we don't have um, much time, okay, so we will just select a few questions, but uh, we will be forwarding your questions to our uh, resource speakers, and then maybe um, if they have time, they can answer, and then we'll just share their answers um, on the SIPAF uh, Facebook uh, page, okay? But uh, for this afternoon, so we can only accommodate a uh, yeah, a few uh, answers. So yeah, so there were a there were actually questions on mindfulness um techniques, okay? So th uh, that was already uh, I think uh, yeah our speakers were able to share with us uh, some techniques already. Uh, yes, so on developing um, resilience, that was already covered. Now, there's a question here. What are the early signs of mental health concerns among students? So I think uh, this question is very relevant, not only to students, but also to their teachers. So okay. Okay. what are the early signs? Yes, maybe so, ask first. Yeah. Doc Ems, thank you very much. Marami po ako natutunan. I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, ma'am. Um, well, um, as what we have been training before in terms of uh, mental health in our um, community, so uh, UP, the UPLB Gender Center has been conducting Dr. Ems and uh, Dr. Evely and then some of the SIPA faculty also were invited there. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my chair, department chair, Dr. Uh, Sir R.G. Albor. <laughs> so, um, Actually, uh, how do we recognize mental health conditions? So um, there are four, basically four red flags. No, so if the if your student or somebody you know um, has neglect of self, you know, failure to you know um, failure to take care of uh, one's uh, day to day. Um, day-to-day -day hygiene perhaps but this is for the extreme huh? so this is one this one is for a mental health problem that needs an urgent attention no um what else uh, neglect of self neglect of others no and then uh harm to self and then harm to others as well so these are the four signs that need that needs uh urgent uh, sorry emergent attention so that means you need to call for help already, a healthcare provider. Now, there are different manifestations of uh, mental health uh, concerns that uh, a student no, or somebody whom we know would, would manifest. So excessive crying, um, not the usual self perhaps. So it's, um, it's more of um, uh, failure to focus, no? uh, the lack of sleep. So these are concerns. Now, if the um, if uh, that's a, a, a red flag for us would be if somebody is currently telling you that um, you know what yesterday I've been I've been having a different you know a different feeling I've been and then for the past two months uh, this has been I'm I'm having a hard time to focus uh, I'm not able to eat sleep. So these are some of the signs that you need to look out for, no? And then if she is aware of it and she's seeking the mere fact that she's telling you or he or she is telling you that that is already a call for help, no? So um, what do you do at that instance? So just simply being there to listen. So how are you doing? Just like what Mom Ems has been show, uh, sharing with us, no? How are you doing? I am here to listen. I, I won't be I won't be judging you. I'm just here to listen. I'm here for you. Just that simple um, act of kindness would you know would um, give give that space of trust, earning the trust of your friend. The mere fact that he or she went to you for uh, help, no. So that's already a sign. So there are different manifestations. In other words, the mere fact that somebody has been having alterations of day to day. Um, activities or sleep problems, those are signs over a period of two months. Kung two weeks yan, yeah, you should consider also. No? So any anybody who's asking for help, therefore, uh, we, we need to lend a, a, an open heart and a listening ear. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Terry. Yes, uh, Dr. Dicolen. 
Yes, if I may add, no, especially in the context now of because we do, we cannot, you know, meet our friends or people who need our help face to face, but perhaps um, online like in Messenger, you really have to be to be very keen and <laughs> sensitive to how they express themselves because you could feel you no know, whether there's coherence or there's focus no in what they're saying so if you feel that there are a lot of issues no being brought up by that person while you know sending you messages that for me yeah, personally based on my experience that is already a sign that this person needs help mm -hmm. like if i may share no uh that was yesterday or the other day a worker from south korea sent me a message no and i and my friend monique no was stopped to prepare to help them in their psychosocial uh, program because right now there's an increase of OFWs also committing suicide because of the situations in their family here and you know being laid off at the same time in, in South Korea. So all of these things really lead them to feel that you know um, how do you call this uh, anxiety and by reading of course I can't hear you know, that person but by reading the messages alone, I knew there was a problem. And I'm very limited because I'm here. So that's the time I think, no, when you need support that if, if this case is beyond your control, no, and beyond your expertise, that's the time when you refer someone no, who needs help to someone who could, you know, who has an expertise on that particular problem or issue. No. Agree, ma'am. Evelina, you're muted. Sorry. Okay. So yeah. So thank you very much, po. Ayan. And uh, speaking of helps, so I'm looking at the questions here in front of me. So there's uh, yeah, a question on the availables. I think uh, Dr. Terry maybe the uh, yeah could could answer this. Uh, um, what are the available psychosocial services offered for UP students? And then maybe there are also some services uh, from UP Manila that can be accessed also yeah. by our students. So what are the available psychosocial services offered for UP students? And how how can we access them? So are okay. you aware of uh, yeah, some programs? So actually right now there's um in UP Manila, the new home of Mom M's. Um, <laughs> have uh, all our interns and even I think if I'm not mistaken the um, Department of Psychiatry has already established an online consult or sort of a hotline so um, they can attend to this healthcare experts uh, this health healthcare experts can attend to our students no and faculty perhaps or you know our family members um online consult now for us here in uh, UP Los Baños we have um the our psychiatrist in-house psychiatrist Dr. Alex Palis as well so we just need to coordinate with uh, their own on uh, social network so via FB no, so UHS has uh, that uh, FB um, link, and then you can inquire, and then the uh, UHS will uh, give you the details no, of uh, the availability. Now, you can also do uh, online consults via the private um, psychiatrists. No? We also have our... Um, Office of uh, Student Affairs. Don't forget our uh, counselors there. So they're always ready to help. At, since the start of this uh, um, pandemic, they've been there for our students. No, not just nourishing them, attending to their uh, biomedical and uh, their psychosocial needs as well, uh, and support. So these are some of the um, support that we have in our uh, area. Okay, so. Yes, Mom Ems, uh, are you aware of any other? Okay, na po. Ayan. So, so thank you for sharing uh, those um, available psychosocial services, no, in in UP. So, uh, here's a work-related question. So, can you share with us maybe, uh, yeah, quickly some uh, tips on how we can maintain focus and positivity during work from home? Uh, yeah, set up. So, yes. Positivity while working from home. Yes. Focus. How do we maintain focus and positivity? Yeah. 
uh, I, work from home setup. Yeah, I know this is challenging. Now, again, <laughs> based on my experience, it took me and my children quite some time to resolve that issue because number one is the place. So we had to do a lot of, you know, trials like, okay, this is my corner, this is your place. Until now, we're settled. Huh. So good thing that before the opening of online classes, we were already settled in our own corners. I think that's very, that's a very practical advice, no? To keep your focus during this work from home, have that space. I know it's challenging, especially for those who have uh, small spaces like us, no? Really challenging, but you just have to uh, to be in one corner. That's your space. That's your protected space. And as uh, try as much as possible not to have it in your bedroom. You have, as uh, Doctor Terry mentioned earlier, you have to establish the routine. Parang papasok ka din. Like ako, no? I get up early in the morning. No, I take a shower. I eat my breakfast, and then I start to work. Establish that routine. Now, if you can manage your time, like for example, okay, at five, I'm off. So I go out of that particular corner or room where I am, you know, where I am working, and then change a bit. So you go to your, to your kitchen, to your dining, to your... So that's one way of focusing. Again, as I, I'm, what I'm saying is based on my experience, and it really worked well. Now, if it's inevitable that you need to extend, no, then treat yourself some time for breaks. No, like in in our, my case, for example, my children would know when I'm stressed. So I started playing the ukulele. No, I start singing. I have my very nice microphone, <laughs> something like that, just to, mm, to have a break. And I uh, last Saturday, for example, I think I mentioned this after the one week of classes, I declared a day a break. Saturday is my day off, and I never felt guilty that I am having a day off because I need it. No? See, so that's one way I think, no, of keeping focus while we are working from home. No, identify your that corner, that place is really very important. Mm -mm. And then, as much as possible, don't eat. <laughs> of course, again, challenging, no? Don't eat in front of your computer. You need to go out because that's another place. See? Because a lot of people are saying, in, in fact, I myself sometimes no, says that also, that, oh, these days you cannot uh, anymore determine which one is work time and which one is family time, which one. But you need to. You need to establish that. No? Establish your routine. Right? Ah, one more thing, Evely, one more thing. Because the question I think was about positivity. When you, This is what I do. When I wake up in the morning, the first question that I ask myself is, what's new today? What is there? So, is there something new that I will learn? Is there something exciting today that will motivate me to engage myself in what I'm doing? And even, you know, even preparing course packs for me is a learning experience. I learned like, oh, this material of mine, these readings is quite obsolete, so I need to change it in even strategies. No? That's why I don't meet my classes synchronously every meeting. And it's changing of mindset talaga. You need to be creative enough to come up with activities. And by the way, no, this is also what I learned no, in my research also and preparing new strategies for teaching during the pandemic. We also have to help uh, to to teach our students develop their soft skills now. Not so much of you know the cognitive, perhaps, but more on the soft skills, attitudes. And incidentally, in NTTCHV, I teach attitudes development and assessment. I love it. I really love that course because it helps me reflect. No, now yeah, during this pandemic empathy mindfulness these are the skills that we should teach our students and they don't need our lecture to teach mindfulness to teach we, they don't need our lecture just give them some questions to reflect on and then process and everything you know 
So keep your positivity every day. Find something good, something that's inspiring every day. Okay? Well said, ma'am. Uh -huh, thank you. Evie, um, you're muted again. Sorry. <laughs> Ayan. So yes, Dr. Terry, thank you. Uh, um, is there anything else that you would like to add to that? Um, I'm, I'm good. Uh, actually, okay. it's so just setting one, uh, one set, setting one goal per day. That's good enough. Set your intention okay. and then, you know, make, make the most out of doing that one intention. That would be, you know, set your, set your positivity already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So how do we overcome anxiety and panic disorder in work? Um, okay. You have, yes. Uh, yeah, because okay. sometimes we tend to be overwhelmed by all of these things that we are doing. Uh -huh. And some of our participants even mentioned that sometimes the, the main uh, cause of our anxiety would be our bosses. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah. so how can we... Yeah, so there's a question here. How do we co overcome anxiety and panic disorder in work? And then maybe the next question is quite related to that. How can we tell our um, bosses or maybe higher officials that they frequently cause mental-related sickness? May, yes. may I waive the second question for Dr. <laughs> <laughs> the first question would be mine, <laughs> Dr. So, okay, anxiety and panic disorder. Maybe okay. Anxiety that. is different from uh, and panic disorder is really a disorder which really wa warrants, you know, it alters the quality of life already, your day to day activities. So, therefore, um, it needs a multi multiple strategies of interventions, no, not just uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, but also um, medications. At that, you need uh, a psychiatrist or a healthcare professional to help you, plus a psychologist, perhaps. No, mm -hmm. and then uh, well, while well, as anxiety, as a, what what I have mentioned earlier, it you can you can control it. You can take charge of that anxiety. No, um, it it you know remember what Mum Mum Ems sh shared with us earlier. What is within our circle of control? That's where we focus on. Hindi natin kayang kontrolin si boss. What we can control is how we react to our boss. No? Maybe it's not the intention of the boss to actually frighten you, but you know, it's, it's how we react to that kind of email, perhaps. Sometimes the email jumps into conclusions na na, ay, galit si, si boss dito. But apparently, well, if you stick with the words, they're just words, no? Sticks and stones can hurt my bones, but your words can't hurt me. So um, essentially, it's everything is uh, all in the mind. You stick with the facts. So what are the facts right now? I feel, what am I feeling? I feel anxious. It's okay to feel anxious at this moment. Okay, what can I control? So focus on, on what I can control. What is the task at hand? What is she asking from me? He or she asking from me? Okay, and then you focus on delivering that task. Don't ever look into uh, what could she say, ito pang mga gagawin, because there are, true enough, no? Um, uh, the, the busyness of the webinar right now is actually another stressor for us. It's very accessible that a lot of people can demand from us to be at two places at the same time. I know people who are managing two webinars at the same time. How can you be, you know, how can you be uh, an efficient person if you're managing two webinars at the same time? You're muting the other one. So again, um, you, can't, you can't be at two places or two laptops at the same time, even if literally you can do it. You know? So please uh, love yourself, love your mind and keep the focus. It's really hard and challenging dur during this time, but, it, um, but first we have to, again, be mindful. You know? Stick to what we can control, what we can do for ourselves. Because that holds okay. true also, uh, that holds yes, true for our, for our students, no? So yeah. sometimes, yeah, so they have a lot of uh, requirements <laughs> that would require, uh, uh, yes, uh, their, their uh, a lot of their attention so yes it can be really overwhelming also for our students yes, so agree. yeah so let's be mindful okay and uh, yeah so unti unti lang no so let's focus uh, on one task okay so uh, 
one by one. Okay. So yes, Dr. Dicolen. So yeah. Okay, Ari, thank you for the other, the more difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, before I, I answer our bosses or maybe our teachers also, because sometimes because I don't you're know. the boss, Doc Ems. <laughs> <laughs> because you're the boss. <laughs> yes, I really agree. No, I agree with what Doc Terry said that what what you can control is your reaction. Hmm. You know, sometimes you can help but overthink. And normal naman yun, that's normal. But, you know, you're just scaring yourself. The first thing that you could do, perhaps, is to clarify. So that, you know, you don't entertain and nurture all those negative feelings and emotions na hindi naman pala, no? And secondly, to answer that, what will you do with your bosses, no? Who are the stressors, no? I think uh, at this point, communication is also very important. And connectedness and at the same time the last thing i mentioned if you remember was about leadership because uh, again laging ang hugot ko kasi is my experience now my experience during this time of the pandemic is that i felt that my boss even our chancellor actually it's a, it was a tall order now the order was uh, every, uh when you hold faculty meetings the first question that you should ask your faculty and your staff is, Kumusta ka? It was a tall order. And you know what? That simple question of asking how are you, it makes a lot of difference. That's number one. So the bosses who are here listening to us right now, please find time to ask your colleagues, your staff, your faculty, that very simple question, how are you? Or the question I asked a while ago, the best thing that ever happened to you during the pandemic. That way you could hear, you could listen no, to their emotions because they need someone to talk to. Be there. Communication is very important. It's a very important leadership trait at this point of the pandemic. Second, uh, in our college, no, in NTTC, NTTCHP, ng haba, no, um, our students are all frontliners. And after the lockdown, that was, I think, second week of March, we established what we call every Friday, Kumustahan, Zoom, students and faculty. And one blessing that we have is our college is the smallest college no, in the entire system. No? So we, we can manage. But you know that even the students appreciated that because our students are frontliners and emotionally they're drained no like how could you uh, take someone saying na nakaano pa siya nakaganyan pa siya saying na i just came from the operating room i just intubated two patients like oh my god no so having someone to listen to you especially your boss listening to your experience no it's really a wonderful you know experience of connectedness so that's one. No? So I think uh, there should be somebody in the organization that should initiate that. Because your staff, even though they're working from home, they go through a lot of anxieties also. And you know, I've been volunteering also with some groups of uh, counselors. Right now, I have several uh, couples na counselees. Because of this pandemic, Imagine being with your husband or wife or your children 24-7. It's not easy. It's causing conflicts. It's causing you know, somebody left home, stayed in the condo because she cannot stand her parents always fighting, blah, blah, blah. Even our children, perhaps, you no, know, even us, we don't, we, can, we don't understand each other. It's causing a lot, a lot of conflict. But having your boss ask you the question, Kumusta ka? See? So communication, just being open with how you feel, no? Kung nahirapan ka na, ops, ops muna, no? Ma'am, oh, time first, time first. Hindi ko kayang iproseso, pwede sandali lang. No, you can do that, you can do that. So mga boss, no? please be open also. No? They need to feel secure. You being the boss should make your people, or sabi na, you being the teacher, should make your students feel secure. 
in your online classroom. Mm -mm. Because you as the teacher is there, no? they trust you. So whatever, you know, whatever the questions you ask them, they trust you. That's why they're telling you the experience. That's why even in the other schools where I gave the, uh, the similar seminar, I encourage them on the first day of class, ask the question, what was the best thing that ever happened to you during the pandemic? And I'm sure they have a lot of answers. No? That's a good entry point so that you feel you observe who among your students, kahit online lang, mukha, mukha lang nakikita mo, mararamdaman mo eh, you would feel who needs help, who needs assistance. And you are there. You're the boss of your classroom. So if you're in an office, you're the boss of your office. Yeah. I hope I answered the question. So please take note, our bosses and that, <laughs> our teachers, please don't forget to ask how... Yeah, your students are how your staff, uh, how how they are. So a simple kung staff, okay, can can mean a, a, a big thing, okay. So time check, it's six o'clock, <laughs> and we're already thirty minutes past hour, <laughs> okay. But uh, I guess uh, yeah, time really flies when you're enjoying the conversation, and I think we've been learning a lot from our resource speaker. So, but unfortunately, uh, we don't have um. Yeah, we, we don't have much time. So before I end uh, this question and answer portion, let me read a few comments from our participants. So thank you so much, Dr. Dicolen. You are most encouraging. Thank you too, Dr. Laude, for providing explanation what is happening on what is happening to our minds and body. So thanks, Sipaf. And then also thank you, Dr. Steri Laude and Emily Bicolen for your enlightening and encouraging talks. Thanks, uh, Sipa, for this timely webinar. You are most welcome on behalf of um, the College of Public Affairs and Development. Another comment here, maraming salamat, Dr. Steri Laude and M. Bicolen. I learned and was inspired a lot. The topic was very timely. Th thank you too, Sipa. Thank you, UPLB Sipa. God bless and God bless you too. <laughs> okay, so yes, we have noted all of your questions and we will forward them to our resource speakers. Perhaps uh, if they have some time, they can answer a few questions and then we'll share their answers um, to you okay, via the CIPAF Facebook page. But uh, for now, <laughs> we need to close okay, the, the question and answer. So anyway, it's, I think it's also information overload because yeah, so we've uh, been learning a lot from our uh, resource uh, speakers. Okay, so um, yeah, so moving on. Okay, so again, so as much as we would like to answer all of your questions, we only have limited time. So thank you to everyone who sent their questions. We'll try our best to have your questions answered. All right. So um, yeah, so I think uh, one of my uh, just few of my takeaways, because really, th there's a lot that uh, that we learned from our resource speakers this afternoon. So just a few takeaways. So yeah, um, amid uh, this pandemic, there is really something good, right? So as mentioned by Dr. Decolet, and that something good, okay, can be you, okay? So it can be us, all right? And uh, by taking care of ourselves, okay, so we can be a blessing to ourselves and also to others. And then as mentioned by uh, Dr. Terry earlier, so it's important we, that we develop a sense of, of community, because we cannot overcome these challenges, the challenges of the pandemic, we cannot overcome them alone, right? So we need help and uh, we need to help, okay, one another. And so thank you very much for helping us discover ways, okay, to, to take care of ourselves. So to our speakers, thank you very much for sharing, okay, your your wisdom okay even your practical tips okay that we can apply so thank you for helping us discover ways okay on how we can take care of ourselves well not just uh of our mental health okay but more so of our entire well-being so once again okay so we appreciate a lot okay what you have um shared with us so um at this point so um we would like to um, award, okay, our um, or present our certificates of appreciation to Dr. Uh, Terry Laude and Dr. Emily Decolen. So, uh, Miss Ruth, can you please uh, flash on the screen our um, certificates of appreciation? Okay, so there. So, um, let me read. So, the College of Public Affairs and Development. 
University of the Philippines Los Baños presents the certificate okay, of appreciation to the, Dr. Terry Marie P. Laude for serving as resource person during the webinar entitled Taking Care of Our Mental Health in the Time of COVID-19 and Remote Learning. So held on 25th, uh, 25 September 2020 via Zoom. So signed, uh, Evely P. Serrano, Head KMO, and Rolando T. Bello, Dean Sipaf. And then we also like to present our certificate of appreciation to Dr. Emily D. Decolen. So once again, SIPAF UPLB presents the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Emily D. Decolen for serving as resource person during the webinar entitled Taking Care of Our Mental Health in the Time of COVID-19 and Remo Remote Learning Held Today via Zoom. So signed once again, Emily P. Serrano and uh, Rolando T. Bello, Dean SIPAF. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so um, again, we're, we're very much um, yeah, so privileged to have to have uh, with us okay our amazing okay resource persons. So we have now come uh, to the end of our uh, webinar. So let me take this opportunity to thank the people behind this webinar. So the Knowledge Management Office of SIPAF. Our technical coordinator, Ruth Cabral, and our support team, Sandy Tan, Chi Britannico, Ruth Rasco, and Stoics uh, Pasqua. So to our participants, uh, to our participants, please don't forget to fill out the online evaluation forms to receive a certificate of attendance, which we will email to you. So we are once again flashing on your screens the links and the QR code. So Ms. Ruth, kindly uh, flash again the links and the QR codes for um, the online evaluation. So please don't forget, okay, to fill out the online evaluation form. So on behalf of the College of Public Affairs and Development, thank you very much once again to everyone who participated in our webinar. So we're one with you in braving the new normal in teaching and learning and in overcoming the challenges of this pandemic. So this has been your moderator, Evie Di Serrano. Let's all stay self, uh, let's all stay se safe and healthy. So before we end, um, yeah, maybe we can have a quick uh, group uh, picture. Ms. Ruth, can you facilitate please the, the group uh, picture? Okay, so yes. Where is Ms. Ruth? Please, uh, yeah, maybe let us know if you're already taking the shots. <laughs> So just be ready, nevertheless, okay, our participants. Yes. Picture, picture. Ayan. So you can see Miss Ruth here. Miss Ruth, let us know if you're already taking the photos. Let's wait for everyone. We have 78 participants left. Earlier, we had over 100. So thank you very much. But I understand it's, <laughs> it's already beyond office hours. So, so thank you. So thank you for staying with us till the very end. And it seems it's a family affair. I can see kids uh, attending the webinar with their parents. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's take the first shot. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Another one. Ready? One, two, three. No. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Okay. God bless. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Dr. Terry. Bye, Emily. Bye, Dr. Bye, Emily. Terry, thank you. Bye, Dr. Ems. Bye, bye, Dr. Bye, Dr. Jane. Everyone. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs>